<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. I have kind of a new setup now. I have a new microphone. So um, hopefully it's actually pointed at my face and you can hear me. All right. So today I'm going to be working on Age of Night, chapter 22, page one. And I already have my grid. I already have my panels laid out. I have perspective. Be quiet, cat. I already fed you. I'm sorry. My cat is bombing my live stream. Good job, cat. Anyway, so I've got perspective grids on three of these panels that I already laid out because that's kind of uh, difficult and onerous to show while I'm doing it. <clears throat> it just doesn't capture on camera very well unless I have the camera like three feet above my desk because you got to spread the points out really far. Anyway, oh my word, cat, get off my desk. You do not belong here. Go. Go. Okay, so just out of frame, I have my layouts and my script. They're off to the side so that I know what I'm doing, which is important. All right, and I'm gonna be drawing mostly in this Prismacolor Cola Race 2004 blue pencil because then even with my lousy controlled heavy hand um i don't have to worry about erasing all the underdrawing after i ink it i can just grab it in photoshop and kick it out of there okay so i'm gonna start just roughing in these first couple of panels i swear cat i'm gonna throw you outside except not really he's an indoor cat he's not allowed outside Everything left off really, really tense in the last couple of chapters at the end of volume three. This is the beginning of getting back into like the prime time of like the prime timeline of the story. Cause I did interlude three, which is kind of the interludes are kind of like out of time. They're not really a part of the, primary story. So. It's a flashback. So the last few things anybody has seen me draw or and what's getting uploaded online right now are all flashbacks. So this is the beginning of getting back to the story proper, which is pretty exciting. figure out the sweet spot for where I want to put this figure, which is going to be right here-ish, because fun pro math renaissance type nerd trick. Hold on. Let me get out a straight edge so I can show you. It's kind of a big complex piece up here. I did a single point perspective partially because it's in the woods. Perspective is just there to help me keep the uh, keep everything kind of making some sort of visual sense, ground my drawing a little bit, but I'm not really going to be super slavish about it. But anyway, trying to find the sweet spot in this composition to help me draw focus. And it's going to be, there's one right about there. That's not really where I want one. There's a few of them. This is some golden ratio stuff. I think this might be the one, maybe. No, it's a little far down too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to split the difference and put him over here for what's gonna work in this composition. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. <clears throat> 
Okay, it looks like the microphone's picking me up. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. I want you guys to be able to hear me. There's all sorts of different tricks for getting your compositions to work for you. Finding that golden ratio sweet spot is one of them, but the fact that he's going to be following this diagonal for the whole page, for this whole panel, it will help a lot too. Helps create a nice sense of movement. Which, I mean, it, this all sounds kind of really dry and uh, cerebral kind of take on composition, but realistically I just sketch out what looks nice and then I kind of if, I, if I'm feeling stuck and it's a little bit overwhelming, then I'll use tools like that to try to refine and make what I'm doing make more sense. But <clears throat> it's not the first place I go. It's a backup. This is kind of a complex image of a bunch of people working together. Which, it's the beginning of this volume, so it has to serve as an establishing shot, but I didn't really want to just draw the woods, so you're going to know exactly where we are from who these people are. Which, if I get far enough drawing today, you'll get to figure that out. If not, you'll just have to be surprised. Wait for next week and find out. <clears throat> oh yeah, I didn't finish this guy down here. Whoops. I might want his figure in there too. Yeah, so even though this is in the woods, sometimes those perspective lines are still gonna help to just keep things grounded like this edge of this tent right here. And just the way that the trees are gonna get smaller as they go back, that sort of thing. And then also for perspective, wherever the horizon line hits your figure, that's where it's going to hit it on all of them if they're the same height, like relative. So this is right along the tops of their heads, so this is going to be right along the top of this figure's head as they're running up in the background. This is, of course, assuming everybody's the same height, which, for the sake of simplicity, I'm kind of going to do here. <laughs> this guy in the running up in the background is just someone random, so I don't have to worry about that being consistent with wherever else he appeared in his relative height. And he's running. Awkward running pose. That's not great. I'll have to figure, fix that some more later. Got another big old tree here. More trees. Maybe another kind of tent structure in the background. Okay. Clever viewers may have already figured out where we are. All right, and then we have 
a word balloon. I let her write on my boards, so I want to make sure that I leave that word balloon space in there. Um, even if I didn't let her on my boards, I'd want to knock in word balloons where they go. There's going to be a couple over here as well. Just so that I'm sure not to leave anything crucial in those areas. And that's part of why I have my script here is that not only in case I look at my thumbnail and go, what on earth is happening in the thumbnail? I don't know what I scribbled here, but also so that I can know approximately how big these word balloons are going to be. Because if I know how many words have to fit in them, then I can make a pretty good guess as to how big they're going to have to be. Having done a fair amount of lettering, I can usually call it fairly close. Not always. Sometimes I call it laughably not close. Then I cry when it comes time to lettering. Which, I have a whole video about that too, if anybody's interested on this channel, how I hand letter. Figure out where that goes. This is all a little bit scribbly, but here's this guy whose head needs to tilt back more to make it work. There we go. That makes more sense. That head's following that line of motion in his body a lot better now. Not getting too wrapped up in what's going on with his face yet since this is just roughing it in, but give me an idea where the those features are gonna go. person who's come running up behind. Oh, somebody actually made a comment. Cool. The pencil marks are so light, it's impressive. Oh, well, thank you. They're actually probably a little bit darker than the camera's picking up, but cameras in blue are not friends, typically, especially kind of not super <laughs> fancy, expensive cameras like my webcam. Um, I think I've gotten better at it, but I, I have in the past been notoriously heavy-handed, so that means a lot that it seems like it's getting better. I appreciate that. Um, that's something I struggled with quite a bit. That's part of why I do the blue pencil technique is because I have a really hard time with graphite that it, it won't all erase because I end up too heavy handed by the end. All right, so there's that figure coming over. Frame that in a little bit with some of the trees and things, so they're not just floating. All right. That's two panels roughed in. Now if I can move my page around without knocking my microphone off the back of my drafting table, <laughs> which I don't want to do that. I just got this new mic. I don't want to drop it off the back of the drafting table. That'd be bad. It's Y'all should see this. It's pretty ridiculous. Maybe I'll show you at the end tilt my camera up and show you. It is taped to the back of my drafting table. It's not impressive. Or is impressive, I guess, if you like really orky ingenuity in things. <clears throat>
All right. This one's basically just a close up of this reaction here. So suggestion of trees in the background, but I don't need to get too crazy with it. Wow, needs zip ties, duct tape, and a bungee cord. <laughs> yeah, if I didn't have to move it, I would get into the screws and nails. But it does need to be other places sometimes. It's just a unidirectional mic. So when I'm doing things on the computer, like when I'm doing gaming streams from the computer, I need it over there. So sadly, I cannot actually zip tie her. Um, although the arm that my camera is attached to is zip tied to my desk, so I will show you guys at the end. It'll be good for a laugh. And Philip Clay had a comment of wish you could do the blue pencil method. Yeah, um, I started with um, doing the the non reprographic blue. That's the method like for an underdrawing, which is the method that I was taught in school. Um, back in art school a million years ago. But uh, non reprographic blue, for one, is not a thing because scanners and cameras are too good nowadays. They'll, they still pick it up. Like they don't pick all of it up, but they pick up a lot of it, especially if you are particularly heavy handed and a lot ends up on there. But the other thing is that that is so light and such like a bright, intense, that figure is way too big. I'm gonna try that again. Um, it's such a bright, intense, super light color that it wrecked my eyes. Like just using it for a couple of years in school accelerated the de degeneration of my vision by like 20 years. It was ridiculous. I needed reading glasses about halfway through college. I wasn't supposed to need them until I was 40. Um, so yeah, I was like, I need a method that does not involve this demon blue because <laughs> it is killing me. <clears throat> and then I saw this method. This was actually using the, um, the cola erase pencils and then inking over it and removing them digitally was a method I actually saw um, Cliff Chang use when I had a really cool opportunity through school to visit his studio and a bunch of other working professionals st studios um, for like an off campus program. Um, I saw him using this method. And so I was like, oh, I, I'm going to try that. Like, that might actually work. And I went home and tried it. And I was like, yeah, how about that? It really freaking works. <laughs> oh, my God. That figure's still too big. All right. When this, Andy also is awkward. This is supposed to be from above. So it's kind of. This, this is how big you need to be. Your head needs to be smaller because you need to be fitting in this space smaller. Yeah, you can see I start getting heavy handed when I start getting frustrated. But yeah, that's the story behind stumbling into this technique. Saw one pro doing it, thought looked like a good idea, tried it, liked it, have been doing it for the last, um, more than 10 years, <laughs> like 12 years now. Uh, although, I mean, honestly, he's probably working digitally these days. I don't know what Cliff Chang is up to these days, but most people are working digitally and I'm just a light. So All right. those arms are a little wonky, but at least now he's the right size. That's how small I wanted him. <clears throat> Um, no, it's okay. I, I do this as much to get to talk to people. You're not, I mean, you're distracting me a little, but only insofar as I distract myself. So if I wasn't doing this and talking to you and distracting myself, I'd probably be like checking Twitter or Instagram, something dumb like that, instead of focusing and doing what I need to be doing. So it's quite all right. I like taking questions. It makes me feel less alone. But that's part of why I do these streams too. I like talking with you guys. Um, and yeah, non repro blue is super waxy too. These are nowhere near that waxy. Every once in a while I get like a waxy batch, but for the most part, they've got a, a much 
a much smoother kind of texture to them. They don't really end up getting waxy on me. They're more like a regular pencil or regular colored pencil, I should say. All right, he's got a spear and Bryce says squirrel. Yeah, pretty much. Doesn't take much. As I was getting set up, I got distracted because there was a bird outside. So. <clears throat> and I live in the woods. You would think a bird being outside wouldn't be that noteworthy, but I still got up and went and looked. Well, let's see. They're in the woods. They're holding spears. Anyone care to guess where we are? Those of you who have read the first couple of volumes, well, first three volumes of Age of Night, this would not, this is only, in, these guys only showed up in volume three. What are you doing with your arm, bro? That's better. Yeah, you know what? I'm not sure if I want to put more people back here or not, so I'm just going to leave it for right now, and maybe I'll fill in later. I'll leave that for a decision for for when more of the page is decided. I'm going to have to move that mic over. I'm, like, totally blocking it with my paper now. <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, learning curve as I try to, yeah. Little lines in the woods of those wood grids for battle reference. No, they're perspective lines. And while there aren't really any, you know, structures here to worry about, um, I, I do still want to have them for reference so that I know how these figures are supposed to relate to each other. Just keep them, keep them grounded. Keep me from having them look all wonky and out of place. All right. There's, oh, he's out of frame. I'll try to. Yet another page where I have like a million figures on here. scooch this around in a place where this is not going to cause problems for me. Er, Uh-oh. Oh, I banged my camera. Oh, lordy. Don't mind me. I'm just a disaster person. Okay. There, that should work. Um, Bryce, what, is, what are all these comments? They so clearly mark a five-foot step. I mean, they, they, they kind of do. They kind of do mark a five-foot step. 
Um, and it was not a yellow-bellied sapsucker. It was a giant raven. I threw some food outside. Maybe he'll come back and be my friend. I can hear him all the time in the woods, but I don't often get a chance to see him, so I was excited. And it would make my gothy little heart very happy to have a raven friend. All right. Last panel of the page. And it's like, I don't like what that arm's doing. Let me, let me fix that. I don't like it. That's slightly better. I might change my mind. I don't like, now I don't like what this arm's doing. That might be better. the rest of that person's head outside of the frame so that I don't make the half that's in the frame look wonky. This is the, I don't know what's going on with this figure. That's going to need some work. This is that big end of page, end of first page of the, end of the first page of the first chapter reveal of like, whoa, this is what's happening. Whoa. This person has arrived. Okay, so it's been about half an hour and I've got all five panels roughed in. So now I can go back up to the top and start getting some of this actually finished up. Although I need to sharpen my pencil. It's getting a little dull. I need to stop banging into my camera and making y'all seasick. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do stuff that's in the that's closest to the camera first. Anyone who's watched any of my streams knows that I loathe that actual the use of that terminology. But what you gonna do? Closest to the viewer, the picture plan. I don't know. We don't really have good language for it. If anyone has a suggestion of better language than stealing from film language. I am all ears, please. This guy, there's his elbow. This big beefy arms yep. 
beefy arms and back muscles. Side of his head. Uh, he needs hair. Okay. <laughs> That's great, James. Yes. Drogdor! If your arms. I won't subject you to my terrible, strong, bad impersonation. But yes. Drogdor. It's really sad. I have to like explain Trogdor to people sometimes. And I'm just like, no. How come you don't know about Trogdor? I don't remember why it came up, but recently I had to explain to someone what Trogdor was and why I was giggling when they were talking about something burning down. <laughs> Just kind of an inappropriate thing to giggle at, but but Trogdor. Alright, that looks like a mess. So. I saw it on the Game of Thrones meme. Yep. Yeah, there were a few of those with the um, second to last episode of the season. Or, you know, anytime. Literally anytime the dragons did anything, it turned into the Trogdor memes. All right, these aren't gonna get super defined because uh, most of the texture is gonna come through in inking. So I'm really just gonna put a few, they're dreadlocks. That's why it just looks like weird shapes. Um, which if you hadn't figured out where we're at, that should really be the final thing that clues you in. Anybody who's read previous chapters of this story. So we're at the Valley of the Black King. And um, when it comes to something that's where getting them to look believable is mostly in the texture, the inking texture, I'm just gonna knock in basic shapes and give myself some guidelines for the texture so that when I go back and do the inking textures later, I don't lose track of what I'm doing, basically. So, so I'll put in these basic shapes and then just give myself those little lines to go around later. Yeah, the, at this stage, they do look like predator locks, but they're not. They're regular human hair. They just, they look like regular dreadlocks once they are inked, but I'm not going to kill myself doing that in pencil when I'm going to have to go over and pull off most of the effect in ink. I'm just going to give myself a roadmap in pencil so that when I do it later, it doesn't look completely silly. Hopefully still retains the 3D look. Man, and I thought inking the dreadlocks was a lot of work, and then I did the cover for volume three, and then I had to do them in colored pencil, and then I was like, why, why did I do this to myself? <clears throat> All right, so there's the back of that guy's head and his shoulder and his big beefy arms. I'm not going to erase everything that's going on inside his arm right now because a lot of that is guides for the figure that's standing just past him, and I don't want to lose any of that. I gave up on Game of Thrones after season three. I gave up during season four, so yeah. 
I I actually like I mean I know what happens because I um you know exist on the internet and nobody shuts up about it so so I know more or less what happens in the story but I stopped watching in season four after um spoilers as if anyone cares for a show a part of a show that's like five years old now uh the episode where Oprah and Martel got killed I was just like you know what I think I think I'm done I think I'm done with this show <laughs> like this show is depressing me more than I'm actually enjoying it so I think I'm done That's that's pretty much where I gave up. Season four was just so depressing and like nothing good was happening in any of it. Other, you know, after the after the purple wedding, which, OK, granted, that was good. But after that, which was like the second episode of the frickin season after that, I was just quite done. Why does he have a giant stick here in the front of this scene? Great question. You know why he has a giant stick here on the front of this scene? Well, probably because it's it's because he's helping these people raise this tent and it's some kind of stool. But the real reason that he has a giant stick in the beginning of this scene is to make sure that when you're done looking at all of this, you look at this panel. <laughs> Pro composition tip right there. <laughs> Just throw in superfluous sticks. But guide people's eyes around. <laughs> Bryce bringing the married life realness. Mars and I only watch the show together. As a result, we've been around each other to watch the first two seasons twice. Yep. Sounds about right. I know shows that, uh, that my husband and I watch together. We go through so slowly. I don't really watch much TV at all because obviously my eyes are busy when I'm doing things like this, but... Don't mind me sharpening my pencil again. All right, start solidifying this guy's face. I don't need to draw anything there. That's the side of this guy's torso. Some little, I forget what those muscles are called on the rib cage, but put a couple of those there to remind myself that I don't need to draw anything there because that's his rib cage. There's this guy's little skirt. Other guy over here getting his face figured out. Sorry, I'll try not to whip my page around too much and make you see sick. But... We can clean up a little bit of that underdrawing. So I do these art streams at one o'clock in the afternoon on a 
Friday, which I know is not the most convenient time for a lot of people, but I do it because it's when everybody's out of my house very consistently. Um, but it's about to be summer. Like the kids' last day of school, and my husband's a school teacher, so everybody's last day of school. Everybody's last day of school is Monday, which is dumb. But so I don't know. I'm gonna have to find them something to do on Friday afternoon so that I can continue to do this because they're all gonna be in my house all the time. We'll have to make Friday afternoon like go watch a movie at Grammy's house time or something. What is happening there? Yeah, we'll clean that up. All right. Figure out what this hand is doing. I don't think this hand knows what it's doing. At the very least, I don't. No, we'll do that. More like he's actually grabbing something. <clears throat> oh, oh, it's so nice to see that YouTube comments auto scroll. So I, I'm actually looking at the most current ones without having to scroll like I did on Facebook. I'm starting to feel like um, good riddance to Facebook Live not being worth it, my time. It seems to be working a lot better. Everybody got, everybody has dreads. Everybody here has dreads. It's just, everybody here has dreads. That's just how it is. I'm just gonna spend however many pages the scene goes on drawing lots of dreads and cursing myself for making that creative decision like years ago when I first did. <clears throat> Whoops. Some more of this going on over here. All right. And now I gotta work on this figure, which uh, um, I have to look up some of what this character looks like because I have not drawn him in a very long time. Which is the other problem. The other problem with having a long-running webcomic is uh, it's real easy to go like months, years between drawing certain characters. There are characters that are showing up in this in this chapter that I have not drawn in years, literal years. So 
So we'll see how that goes. While I'm waiting for that to load and look up the character that I need, I'm going to just work on this figure. Okay. Work on solidifying this figure a little bit more. Figuring out where all his muscles and stuff are. Excessive amount of butt going on there. Well, that's yeah, yeah. Okay, that's better. All right. I've gotten that figure a little bit more solidified. Now I need to know what he looks like. Because <laughs> I don't remember. That's a problem. Which is why I'm looking up my own webcomic on my phone like a goober. Okay. 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 Now I have the page in question pulled up on my phone because I'm a, I'm a professional. <clears throat> Goober grape. Yeah, pretty much. That's me. That's a little low. I'm gonna have that back here. He's gonna move my phone out of frame. <laughs> it's kind of distracting and goofy looking. Oh goodness. I guess I'm just keeping myself humble with how foolish I am. Is that what, what is happening? There's his, what's that jawline look like? Give me that jawline. There we go. And there's the basic look. And then we've got the really rather large headdress he's wearing now. It's really kind of like a crown, basically. And the big furry mantle. I've got to have big furry mantle. There we go. Big furry side pieces. There. Okay. Now at least I can I can work with that. I can work with that without my phone in my hand. Piece of rope that he's holding. 
Let's see. Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes left, so maybe I'll get through. Maybe I'll get through this figure. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Forearm. Edge of the big furry mental. So yeah, these guys were they were around for like the first half or more of volume three, and we haven't really seen them much since. Now they're going to be back in the story again for a little while, which is cool. I really like these guys. And I like them more when they're not in the jungle and I don't have to draw a crap load of vegetation around them all the time. Because that gets really, really old. <laughs> Lord. A seam in his freaking six pack. Well, furry hip warmers? I don't know what you would call that. They're just kind of like decorations on like either side of either side of his hips. Hip warmers, sure. Why not? There's probably an actual like garment term for what you would call something like that, but I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Clean up some more of that under drawing. Various bracelets and things. Is that still in frame? Okay. I'm going to give my pencil one more quick sharpen before I try to finish this guy up. I regret my decision to set my book in a canyony, mountainy area. If I have to have, never have to draw another canyon wall, it will be too soon. I know, but but Philip, your rocks are so beautiful. Like you, you draw the most beautiful rocks. But yeah, jungles do also get old really fast. I think that's probably one thing that saves my sanity is that in this in this series is that there's usually enough happening in different places that I don't get too tired of any one. They spend enough, the characters spend enough time moving around and then like for the last several chapters I've had all my characters split up so they've all gotten to be in completely different areas. That helped a lot.
A little teeth on the edge of this. The angry cat face. The angry snarling Kiara's face. Also dreadlocks. The headdress actually has a bunch of real human hair dreadlocks like attached to it of you know former chieftains. Actually attached to it, but Asim actually still has a fair amount of hair as well, so got a lot of hair going on. <clears throat> okay, so that finishes that character. We've got just a couple minutes left. I'm going to work on this little rope here while I do all the things where I tell you guys that this is from my webcomic, Age of Night, which you can find on ageofnight.com. I upload a new page every Wednesday. Um, this is a few pages ahead of where we are online at this point, so you won't see this one for a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm doing these art streams every Friday at 1 o'clock. So if you subscribe to this channel, then your phone or your computer or wherever that you have YouTube will give you a little ding and let you know when I go live in case you don't remember to come and check it out. So that's always handy. All right. And I think that's going to do it for today. Well, thank you everybody who came and hung out with me today. Uh, what do I think about Keanu Reeves? Is there anyone who doesn't like Keanu Reeves? Is that a thing? I just thought that was just like the the detail, the, the like default <laughs> human stance. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. So thanks to anybody who came and hung out with me and asked questions and watched me flounder around like a fool like I do. Um, yeah, we got five panels roughed in and one panel about halfway penciled so we got a couple characters and a little bit of trees in the background to fill in so made some pretty good progress in this hour and hopefully i will see you guys all next week bye <laughs>